Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Uh, our sunlight is back, it's warm, hence why I'm rolling my sleeves up. Um, just an amazing, amazing Wednesday. Uh, the third best day of the week is kicking off well. So yesterday, we, uh, we discussed uh, garden pests, I like to call them. Uh, and today, I thought we'd talk about a much friendlier subject, garden friends. So just so you know, I want to touch a bit on yesterday. Uh, we got comments and feedback, which are always, always welcome. Um, and, and some people were asking about, oh, please don't hurt. I will never, ever, ever hurt an animal. Uh, I will always, always try and discourage them. I will try and promote overall health of the garden. I'll try and promote bringing in other species that will take care of problems for me before I advocate uh, chemical sprays or hurting them. That's a personal choice. Again, um, it's not one size fits all. And there are times when I will use a spray if an infestation is so bad it's gonna kill all of the plants, then I will advocate doing that. But it is never my go-to. I believe promoting health and strength, having a good offense is your best defense. So having cleanliness, having a good airflow, encouraging these friends that we're gonna to discuss today to your garden um, is way better than anything else. Uh, if you just treat the symptom without treating the cause of the problem, much like if we get sick, you're gonna always be fighting that. If you can clear up the root cause, you're gonna do so much better and let nature balance itself. For example, you know, aphids. Every gardener knows them. If you're new to gardening, you're gonna get to know them. Um, and they're a real pest. They, they can do a lot of damage and they're really, really common and prolific. Is there a spray? Absolutely, there's any number of sprays for them. But there's also things like hoverflies um, and ladybirds, or ladybugs. Sorry, I'm from England, we call them ladybirds. What's a ladybird? I don't know if you guys can see it, I've got a ton of product here. That's a, uh, a ladybug, and they are voracious. And we actually carry these, we don't have any in yet. We're waiting for them to get back to Canada. Uh, and these guys are amazing. Um, and especially the young, uh, much like Harry, if you guys remember Harry, uh, they eat significantly more than the adult. Um, and I don't know where they put it all because he still stays super skinny. I look at what he eats and I put on 10 pounds. He eats it and loses five pounds. I don't know how that works. Um, but it's the, same, it's the same with these. They're young or voracious. So if you see uh, a ladybird in the garden, a ladybug, a ladybug in your garden, it's on a seek and destroy mission. So let it be that. They are gonna hunt down all those critters. Um, so I'll always try and promote that. And another really great uh, animal to get into your garden are birds. Uh, not least for the aesthetic. I mean, who doesn't love uh, getting up in the morning and hearing that sound of, uh, of the bird, the songbirds when they've come back and we've had a quiet winter and now the yard is filled with it. Uh, birds can also help pollinate. They also seek and destroy things like cutworms, so they're looking for bugs to pull off. Uh, again, we did touch, there are invasive species of birds, but again, those magpies and house sparrows, they're opportunistic, they may be aggressive, but if your garden is already filled with songbirds and your neighbor's garden isn't, they're gonna go to the easier target. They don't want the competition. So again, promoting that health, and that can be as simple as Finding the feed for the bird you want to encourage. Uh, getting uh, bird houses and bird feeders set up. We've even got, um, look at this plant, by the way. You're the best. I picked this out and I want to dedicate this to me um, because I'm very humble. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is dedicated to all of you guys, to everybody else. I love this. It's in a beautiful pot and you guys are the best. Um, and that's for you guys, and we just have a pretty flower. But we've even got DIY kits. You know what? Build this, paint it, have fun with it, and encourage the birds to come to your garden. We have different feeders for different seeds. We've got, I mean, throw some cranberries and raisins in there, and I'll probably chow down on that. Um, and you want to attract these birds, because again, they're going to pick bugs off. They're going to look for things, and they're going to help ward off the other ones. And it's literally a matter 
of getting things like sunflower seeds. And it's that kind of thing. And you fill them up in your feeder and then the birds do the rest. And it's a great, great hobby. Sitting and watching the birds flit about, getting pictures of them. Um, people love it. And submit your pictures to us. Submit them to all our partners. We've got Chin Ridge, we've got Armstrong. Um, we want to see the birds you're getting into your backyard. So have fun. We've got so many different kinds. Uh, we've got people who, who swear by one brand, others who say it works. Some that say it don't, their birds prefer something different. So find out what birds you've got, what you want to encourage. Um, maybe your neighbors have got blue jays and you want blue jays in your yard, then you're gonna want big peanuts. And, and look around and see what you can get. Another good one that goes without saying, I think we all know bees and butterflies, how important they are for the garden. And putting up things like this, which is a butterfly feeder, and you just add the nectar, hang this up somewhere nice and low, and the butterflies will find it and they'll come to your garden. Put up a butterfly house, and they'll go in there and shelter from the elements. Bees, I can't tell you how many times I found a bee on my property that isn't doing good. She's crawling, she's exhausted, she's been going out, it's plus 30, we haven't had rain in a month, and this poor thing is suffering. And I'll pick it up, it'll be on my hand, I've taught Harry how to do it, Jenny's done it. And what you do is you go and get some sugar water and just put it on your finger. They'll drink that sugar water, instant boost, and off they go. But if you wanna just leave them something, it's hard to pick this one up because I don't plan ahead too well and I filled it with water already. So I'm probably gonna make a mess, but hey, that's okay. Take a saucer like this, fill it with rocks, fill it with cold water, leave this next to your garden. The bees can't go into deep dishes. So if you've got something like a bird bath, the bees find it very difficult to get in there because they're gonna drown. Where this, they can land on the rocks and get into the water, and that's it. Fill it up with clean water. Every animal needs food, shelter, and water. If you've got flowers, you've provided them with food, They'll normally find their own shelter, but like I said, you can put up houses and whatnot and give them water and they will come. I promise you they will. Bird baths, feeding, butterfly feeders, they're all going to come. And once they're in there, your garden will benefit massively from it. Another thing, a lot of times people buy pots, uh, they get knocked over, uh, they get damaged in the fall, you're cleaning them out, they crack. You forget about them, guilty, leave them out over winter, you go to get them in the spring, the freeze thaw from our Chinooks or whatever has caused them to crack and break. Now you've got a broken pot. A lot of people go, ah, that's garbage, they throw it out. Fair enough. But if you take a pot, and this is a, a, a damaged one we got off the floor, it happens, don't worry about it. What you do, flip that upside down, okay? Put that in your garden. If you need to make it bigger, slight hammer, not that hard, gloves, heavy gloves, chip that away. Put that upside down and you can start encouraging toads and snakes into your garden. Toads absolutely love, I'm gonna use the proper word here, gastropods, slugs and snails. They love to eat those critters. Snakes eat all kinds of bugs. The little garter snakes that we get around here, um, they'll eat uh, the grasshoppers. Uh, they'll eat mice that might be in your garden or going through your bird seed. Um, unfortunately, they might also eat small toads, which is counterintuitive. But hey, let nature balance itself. But you can encourage them into your garden. If you don't want them in your garden, don't leave a habitat for them. They'll go somewhere else. So if you're scared, you're, oh, I don't like snakes or I don't like toads, don't encourage them. Encourage the ones you want. Personally, my garden welcomes everything. Like I said, I never want to hurt an animal. I, everything is welcome all-inclusive, I try and make it uh, as open as we can. Another one that uh, isn't a popular garden friend is our spider. And I know a lot of people are arachnophobic. If you're arachnophobic, put your hand up. Right here, brandy has got her hand up too, just so you know. But you know what the funny thing is? I'm not arachnophobic when the spider is outside. In my house, I freeze, I panic, I shout for Jenny, she picks them up nicely and puts them outside because she's a sweetheart. I panic and stand in the corner crying. Um, they're incredible. And we get a lot of people who come in and they go, hey, uh, I've got so many spiders in my garden. It's a problem, how can I kill them? Why would you want to kill the spider? 
Spider is a predator. It's not hurting your plants. It's going after things that are hurting your plants. The spider is sending you a strong signal. You have a problem. So again, it's treating the cause and the symptom and the problems. If all you're going to do is kill those spiders, whatever they're catching and, and feasting on that's encouraging more of them is going to expand. I don't know if you've ever heard about Keystone Animals and when they reintroduced wolves into the Yellowstone National Park. Fantastic documentary. I strongly suggest watching it and how much things change by bringing in one of these predators. Same thing with the spider. The spider is sending you an indication you have a problem. The spider is not the problem. Granted, if I go outside and I see spider webs everywhere, I'm gonna be a little creeped out. But I'm gonna be a lot more creeped out by having thousands and thousands of other bugs that these guys are chomping down or catching in their webs. So the spiders are your friends. And another one, again, some people love them, some people don't, are the bat. And these guys are phenomenal. I remember years and years ago, uh, reading a story about a farmer in Quebec and his land was not producing. He was infested with bugs and he didn't know what to do. And this was years ago when I lived back there and I was doing horticulture. Uh, and somebody set him up bat boxes. They set these boxes up all over his property. Within two years, it had completely changed around. The, the droppings for the, from the bat, bat guano, enriched the soil and they eradicated the bugs. These guys are voracious feeders and they will gobble down mosquitoes, all kinds of things, uh, horse flies, black flies. They'll eradicate them. Uh, you want these guys in your garden. Dragonflies, if you see dragonflies, let them come in. Again, they are feasting on all the bugs we don't want. So when you see all of these things in your garden, it's a living garden and that is the healthiest thing. A sterile, dead garden you're going to end up with more problems. You're going to end up, things like your slugs and your snails, your aphids, again, they're opportunistic. They're gonna go to where there aren't predators. They're gonna go to untreated, uncared for gardens. These guys, your beneficial critters, you welcome them in and make them a happy home, they're gonna stay. If you need more advice about this, or you, you want me to go further on it, leave us a comment, let us know. Come in and talk to us. Come look at our bird feed. Look at our bird feeders, uh, our bird houses. Look at what we've got for butterflies and bees. Uh, what we've got for bats. Um, if you've got your broken pots, flip them upside down. Get the toads in there. Pick up a bag of ladybirds and let them go in your garden. Learn how to like make overwinter areas for them. Leave an area of your garden filled with leaves over the winter. Your spiders and your ladybirds and everything are gonna go hide ladybugs. I can't even tell you how many times I've said ladybirds. They're gonna go hide in there, and when you clean that out gently in the spring, you're gonna see these critters running everywhere. Can't ask for better. They're waking up out of their hibernation. They're hungry. They are gonna go before the problem becomes a problem. So keep that going. Again, don't forget to check out our social media for our June Brides contest. I believe we've still got some spider plants to pick up. I could walk by, I could hear them crying. They're looking for their forever home. So. Come get them, we don't want these guys being sad forever. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we got a message for some teachers. Absolutely use our videos uh, to teach the kids. Any questions, let us know. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about weeds. What is a weed? Should we leave them? Should we encourage them? How do I treat my weeds? Maybe you're not gonna expect the answers you get from a horticulturalist on your weeds, but I'm certainly gonna share it. Have a wonderful Wednesday, everybody. Enjoy the sun. If it's cold where you are, stay inside. Rewatch my video. I'm super entertaining. Remember, I'm the best. No, I'm kidding. You guys are the best. Nothing but love for you all. Enjoy your Wednesday. We're so close to the long weekend. Canada, we're going to get there. Bye, everyone.